Location allocation modeling. Location allocation modeling is done when we have a number of competing locations. For example, locations in space at which you might want to, as a retailer, open, let's say, a new retail outlet. You can have a number of locations that are potential ones, and you want to figure out which of those locations would provide the greatest return on investment, let's say, through serving the most customers. And so you would use a location allocation model to figure out which of the potential locations would win in a competition among the locations to service the most customers. The last example that we'll do with a worked example in ArcGIS Pro is what's called location allocation modeling. Now that you can have an entire course on this by itself, we're just going to touch the very surface basics of location allocation modeling. The idea of location allocation modeling is that we have a number of competing locations in space. These could be stores, for example, Starbucks Second Cup, or uh, SO Petro Canada, or any type of um, thing that competes for different customer bases in space, for example. In this example, the province wants to amalgamate certain medical services like x-ray and blood sampling to fewer medical facilities to increase financial accountability. In Orleans, there are six medical clinics that offer these services, and the services will have to be located at most two medical clinics. And they must be the two medical clinics that are the most accessible to the population of the Orleans region. So there are two out of six. So we have two of six facilities that are candidates to be chosen among. So we don't know which two of these would best service the population. The population here, or the demand for those services, are the proportional red circles, where each circle's the size is proportional to the population for that block within Orleans. So these are block level. So block level, yeah, looks like blood level. Let me just change that, block. CK. So block level population again. And that's the, the same population we previously used in the examples. It's just for Orleans only here as the to better visualize things. So we have population that demand the services of x ray, blood sampling, etc. And so the province obviously needs to locate these in the most accessible way possible. So it has to choose among the facilities. And because there's a choice that needs to be made among the facilities that offer blood services and x-ray, that becomes a location allocation problem within the network. So it's an optimization problem here where we need to find the two facilities that optimize their optimized best location. That means minimizing some function. In this case, minimizing the total time traveled by the population. So the population become weights. So these become weights. And the population and the travel time have to be taken into account when choosing the best two locations out of those six clinics. So we have two uh, concepts here. We have facilities, another facilities class, and facilities are the locations in space that compete. So there are a set of competing locations, and the location allocation algorithm will choose the best out of those candidate locations to allocate the demand to in the most efficient way by minimizing um, the travel time and maximizing the total population served. 
So these trade-offs are fundamentally important in location allocation modeling. So the facilities class is the candidate locations, and that could be locations for a new store. And you could then have the demographics of your customer base as the demand locations or points. So the demand point class stores the other part of the equation, which is the locations that need service at these facilities. So the demand point could be a point class like we have. We have um, particular population. So we only care about population in this example. And we have block population. So those are points. However, it could be in other cases, you may only have, let's say, census tracts. And you could use their centroid as the points that need to be allocated to the competing facilities. So anything um, that can be reduced to a point in some way can become a demand point. Often those are business customers, for example, or potential customers based on uh, demographic profiling of existing customers. So to create the allocation or location allocation analysis layer, we choose location allocation analysis layer under the analysis tab and then the network. And that opens up the, the network analyst tab and the location allocation tab. As long as you've selected location allocation, that layer analysis layer in the table of contents pane. So like usual, we import facilities to start with, and these will be the Orleans physicians this time. And again, physician ID. And nothing else changes. So notice across all these things, the only things we're ever really changing are the input locations, the feature class they refer to, and the field names here. Sometimes we'll have to choose something in here as well in the next step as an example. So once we load in the Orleans physicians as the facilities, these are the candidates and they'll be they'll be uh, symbolized like that in, in this case here. And you could have other the other an important thing about this is that you could have other existing, especially if you're doing this in a business uh, scenario, you could have existing competition, you know. Uh, there and required locations as well. So the required locations would, for example, be the locations of your existing um, outlets, stores, or whatever would be in there would be in space. Things that uh, can't change but have to be taken into account in the demand allocation to each of the facilities. Next, we load in the demand class. So the demand points. So that'll be the Orleans population in this example. The next thing that's very important here is that the Orleans population, each point has a population associated with it. And so you need to click under field mappings here, property, click on the weight and assign that as pop 2000. That's the field that contains the population for each point and specify a default value of zero. In other words, if there is no if there's nothing or uh, no data in a particular case, make it zero population. So this is a different thing from all the other ones in that we have a weight for each population. If you don't have weights, then you don't choose anything there. They'll be de defaulted all to equal weights. Then everything else is the same. Search tolerance, SNAP network, append existing locations, nothing new there. And you click run and that will load in the demand points class right here. The demand points, once they're loaded in, this is just showing the table, you'll see that each point has a name and a weight. The weight here is the population. 2000. Once it's run, 
then these will just be transferred over to the allocated weight field here. So this is before running any analysis. So again, our analysis, we want it to minimize total travel time while maximizing the number of people served. And using those two conditions, choose the best possible two locations in Orleans. So we have to set that up in the properties of the location allocation tab. First, we were interested in towards facilities. Again, driving network, this matters because it's a directed network or a directed graph. So towards facilities, population will be going towards the facilities. Um, here, number of facilities defined, we need to change that to two. So we wanna find the two best facilities. And then um, you can click on the little summation here. What do we want to attributes uh, to be accumulated? We want minutes, not length or distance. So we care about minimizing time. And then the type right here. And you can see right here, there's a number of different types. We have um, minimize weighted impedance P. So minimizing the weighted impotence. So in other words, minimizing time, maximizing the population. And so we want to choose that first one for this type of analysis. You could read about the other ones here. See, there's a bunch more of them that we won't be looking at. And then the output geometry straight lines. And this is the result. So what we see here are these two locations, right here and right here. According to this location allocation problem, are the optimal locations for locating these two medical services, blood drawing and x-rays. So they maximize the population and minimize the travel time. And obviously, you know, there, there's some marginal, like especially in here where you have, you know, right there, the marginal time differences, let's say be going to this one or this one are really negligible for these ones, but it has to find a solution for each one. So it finds it according to the specifications of the problem. And of course, some will be, you know, if there's just two, two, um, two locations right here, you know, that are going to different, that one's going here, that one's going here you know, they're just that far apart, you know, that could be the matter of a couple seconds, but it will still allocate them. And again, it doesn't matter necessarily that they're different by a couple seconds. What matters is that the population would best be served by these two locations versus any other two locations in that candidate set. And that then completes the location allocation analysis.